In this video we will continue working on the new and updated icons on the sidebar, but first let's fix something. When I log into admin I see two big lists, so we don't filter the checklists by users. So in the database we have checklists with user ID and parent checklists, but we need to filter them out. And we do filter them out on the user level, so in the sidebar blade for admin we just load checklists, and for user, which we refactored into menu composer, we have this query, checklist where null user ID. So let's use the same view composer, menu composer, to also do view with user menu and do view with admin menu. So let's have admin menu. And what is the value of admin menu? All we need to do, so we don't need those grouping is new and something. We just have it here with admin menu. It could be equals menu and we can perform that to array a bit later. So for example, we can finish here at get and then to array could be here in the for each like this. And now we can use that admin menu as a variable here. So for each checklist group changes to admin menu and it should still all work. But now we should not see those big list items refresh. And exactly, we see only the ones that are admin menu items. And one more thing I wanted to change is that new checklist doesn't really look grouped by this checklist group. So the idea is this checklist group, those checklists, and then adding new checklist to this group. So let's move it a little bit to the right, the padding, so it would look like belonging to this launch new feature. And in here we have those regular links padding with inline style. So let's add the same or a bit different inline style to the new checklist here. So style, refresh, and it will be still a bit changed. So we have new checklist, but let's add a bit top padding here. So not dot five, but full one REM. And if we refresh, now it's within the same group, but a bit different, a bit separated from the regular list. So now it's more clear what is what. Now we're back to the user side of things and I've noticed one more thing we need to fix. If the admin added the group without checklists, so it's empty group, let's hide it from user so far because admin is in process of creating those checklists. And if there's at least one checklist, then we should show the group. Otherwise we shouldn't. So when we're working in the menu composer with menu to array, we check if count group checklist will be like this. If count is bigger than zero, then we add the group. Otherwise, we don't add that group. Let's refresh the page. Undefined index checklist. Okay. Oh, of course, it should be checklists like this. Refresh. And yeah, we don't see those empty groups. Great. Now let's solve that problem of if we see that new icon on the checklist, but if we click the last action updates, and then we don't see that new anymore. And we don't see new icon for any items because the last action is global for all the menu items, which means that if I click anything, it seems that I've looked at all others, which is not the case. It should be individual. So when clicking new here, so for example, let's change that to some future date again, we save, we refresh and we see the new, but if I click, that should disappear because I already clicked that. So what I realized from previous video that we need to compare the created ad of groups and checklists, not to last action of user, but last action on that particular checklist. So there should be something like checklist last action ad, something almost like this checklist last action add. Of course, we don't have the field on the checklist of last action add for users. But if you saw previous videos, if you're following the series, you probably will remember that in checklist controller, when visiting the checklist here on this page, we have a method called sync checklist from admin to user. And this is exactly what we can use here. So sync checklist just creates the checklist with user ID. And if we refresh now, I have the checklist, which is the same checklist with parent ID two, but with user ID 17, my logged in user. So we can use updated add of this to compare if this checklist is new or not. But we need to update it all the time whenever I click that. So for example, when I click it again, oh, sorry, I messed it up. So let's roll back. 
refresh. So when I click it again, that updated ad should be refreshed. This one, it doesn't change. To do that, there is an eloquent function called touch in checklist service. So when creating or updating the checklist, let's do this checklist. So assign the value, then we need to return that from that service, return checklist. But meanwhile, we will do checklist touch. All it does is updates updated add to now to the timestamp. So if we refresh now and refresh the database, see the updated ad has changed. And now we can compare the creating of checklist and checklist groups to updated ad of user checklists. And let's try to form a query in the view composer here in the database. We will query only the checklists belonging to the logged in user and see the checklist ID and checklist group ID and set the updated ad to maximum. So first let's create user checklists, checklists as checklist where user ID, auth ID, get. So we have all those checklists and then we can filter them in the collections here. So we have the group and then when that group was updated, group updated equals user checklists, where, what's the field name? Checklist group ID. And remember, we don't make the query to the database. Now we're filtering the existing collections. So we have one query, one result, and then we filter the collection without touching the database. So where checklist group ID is group ID max of updated ad. And then we can compare not to last action ad, but group updated ad. Actually, let's call it updated ad like this and like this. Same thing with checklist updated ad. Checklist updated ad should be here. So checklist updated ad where checklist ID equals checklist ID, max updated ad, same condition, and then we copy checklist updated ad instead of last action ad, last action ad. Okay, let's refresh and we see that new. They're both new because I haven't actually clicked that test the feature. If I click that, then it disappears because it appears as a new row here, test the feature, with updated ad here, which is newer than the checklist was created. And let's change that checklist to the original created ad. And we probably should not see that new icon anymore here. But let's try to update some checklist from the admin and see if we see the icon UPD. And if we click, it should disappear. Login as admin. Let's change push code to GitHub. For example, to the GitHub. Save checklist. So updated ad of that checklist should change. So updated ad is changed, this one. And this is newer than updated ad of these user checklists. So now I should see UPD on this one on push code to GitHub. So we log out, we log in with that simple user and we see UPD as expected. But if we click that, then UPD disappears because updated ad, if we refresh, it's changed. This is exactly what we wanted. Finally, let's test it on groups. So from the admin area, let's create a checklist for one of those new groups, which are really new. So new checklist, checklist one, for example, we save. So that group is new to us, to every user actually. And let's see if we see the new for all the group. Log in again, a simple user, and we see new here and UPD here. That UPD should not be here, I think. So let's add another condition of checklist is updated is not group is updated and not group is new like this, not group is new like this. And if we refresh, yep, that UPD is gone. We have a new group, but if we click that one, it should disappear. Let's try it out. Yep, that disappeared because we see already that checklist. It is kind of seen as on Facebook Messenger and we don't need that icon anymore. So I think we're good with all that feature.